a brown and fawn colored corner, standing 5 feet 11 inches, weighing in at 230 pounds. The thunder from down under, the size scene that's rocking the scene, Mr. Pascal! Woo! Hello! Welcome, everybody! I'm gonna call this Pasky tonight. This is a video coming to you from my heart. Thanks to all of the other people who've done my videos that I see and I respect and I love. I'm going to give it a shot too to learn how you do your thing and, uh, and how difficult it is to make it entertaining. If you've never met me before, my name is Pascal. I'm a 29 year old dude under here, but I'm also a Tasmanian tiger. These are my stripes. This is, this is my proof. And I am here tonight from Melbourne, Australia. Marvellous to have you here. Whoo wee I've been in the fandom for like four years since I've made an FA. I've been a suit for about two and a half years. And I probably first came up to this uh, this whole furry thing uh, maybe seven years ago. Hey, I don't know. Let's just call it that. Considering the fandom is all about uh, creativity. And even, you know, just generating content, giving a piece of yourself, exchanging ideas, bouncing some stuff off. I just thought I would give this a crack. Uh, what gives me the confidence to do this, you ask? What gives me the credentials to do this? I don't have any! But what I do have is a fursuit, and apparently you can get away with anything when you do this, so... I'm sorry. But I have to make this happen. I have to try this. I don't watch a lot of videos on the internet. But I have noticed that there's a little bit of a theme happening around the dance community, the dancer community. Uh, it, and let's just, I'm going to narrow it down to the debate around the word dancer fur. Yeah, you might have heard of the term before. Dance is one of the big pillars of the fandom. You got your art, that helps bring your characters to life and have a whole people show off their skill set and even exchange money. So, you know, whoo, 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 not half bad. Then you got your fursuit, that's another way to bring your characters to life. But then, in terms of con, big events, perhaps even the centerpiece event, is a fursuit dance competition. And that's another way that you can bring something to life as well as perform. And really show off your skills. Hot damn, hot diggity dog. Now, in America, it is immensely different to the way it is down here. Down here, our fursuit dance competitions, well, you probably get fewer competitors than there are fingers on my paws. Can you believe that? Yeah, you can. Even our most recognized dancers are either like hosts or judges, or they do a little exhibition. So, I feel compelled. I feel compelled to answer the challenge of, let's turn up, let's make the winners look good by having a few more people out there. And... And, uh, and and giving giving the people what they want because it's still attended fiercely by people who are at the con and I've even heard that there's people from all around the world who actually look at the dance con competition videos of Ferdu or River or some of the other little con the cons we have around here little by comparison but hey you're not going to find a massive dance floor an auditorium full of people with dance crews at different, you know, classes and doubles and singles and all kinds of crazy events. And you're probably also not going to find people coming down to the con space with a boombox at like 2.30 a.m. That probably isn't going to happen here. We're probably going to be looking for, you know, the next room party because, you know, security shut down another one. That's probably what we're going to do. So I don't know if our dance culture is as strong, but dear God, we still love our dance competitions. Now... In America, it seems like there's a huge dance culture. And I don't know whether there's something about furries that brings it or whether there's something that dancers just, just want to come in and that this is a huge place to show off their skills. There are just some amazingly trained people with sick skills. And if they, if they hear the term dancer fur, they're like, yeah, I've been doing this shit for a long time. I know, I know what, what is up here. I know what's going on. So you take a certain amount of pride in that term. But then the other side of it is, you hear dance a fur, if you dance and you're a fur, port by the portmanteau principle, you can be a dance a fur. And so if people think, eh, you know, well, you're on the same level, that might take you aside just a little bit. Now, 
before I get to the one little insight that I have, I want to let you know that in the dance competitions, I love going up there. You strut your stuff, you're all hot and sweaty, you get the applause from the audience and I just bask in it for a little while. And then, then the judges come in. I actually find this a strange concept now that I step back and think about it. I come from a sports background. You got a scoreboard up there, you know? It always says who's winning. Even in subjective sport, you get diving and your gymnastics, they'll still say, you know, Romania judge gives a 6.0. So you kind of know who's winning. Now, I don't know why they do this judging because it adds a little extra allure and mystery to who the actual winner is going to be. Because, you know, you get a sense of whether they're in the right direction or not. But you never really know until the end who's actually won the thing. But I actually think that there's one more thing about it. By giving critique, it's, it's become clear to me, the realisation for me is that the dance community wants you to improve. If you're up there on stage, they're saying, he, we liked what you did, we liked what you did with this, but you can also, you know, work on work on this. So I think the dance of fur term, if you're going to wear that, if you're going to get respect from the community at large, you can't just dance and be a fur and have a go. I think there's this extra level where you've got to practice or put some effort into really working on your game a little bit. And that makes a whole lot of sense to me. I am actually going to try and take this challenge on board. I think I can do better. I'm going to do it little by little. I might even throw me in a little dance session to a song just to the end of this. Just so you get a sense of what I'm all about. Because hey, I am not a professionally trained dancer. I am by no means respectable whatsoever. My dance style is somewhere between physical comedy and literal interpretive dance. But hey, what can I say? I like to take cues from the lyrics. And I like to have fun with it. I want you to have fun with it too. I've had some fun here. Hopefully you've heard some of the things that I've said. And you have not torn your own earbuds out. Earlobes out. Any part of your ears and head. If you have not taken those apart. I thank you very much. Cheers for watching. If you like it, you can give the thumbs up thing. If you don't like it so much, you want to see less of it, you can thumbs down. I'm totally cool with that. But hey, if this is the only time we ever do this, if I never find time again, if there is no mutual love, then thank you for being part of a little piece of history of what I've been doing here today. Thank you very much for joining me on Patsky tonight. And I will see you again sometime. Cheers. Bye-bye. Much love.